Hey guys, welcome back. We all want effortless power. We want that easy, fluid swing and to still be able to bomb the ball. But I'm going to talk about two mistakes that can really cause some havoc in your swing, make you feel really quick. So if you're feeling tight, if you feel like your hands are really grabbing the club, you really feel like you're having to accelerate really fast and you're not getting the swing speed that you want, I'm going to talk about how to sw smooth out the swing and get more speed at the same time. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's start with timing, tempo, and rhythm. This is something I see a lot of people struggle with, and it really comes down to your weight shift. If we have the proper weight shift, then we're gonna be smooth in the swing, and we're still gonna create some speed. It, I like to think of it, your weight shift as being two pivots. So you have your right hip socket. You imagine your, your upper leg comes into your, your hip socket here at your pelvis. That's your right socket, or your right pivot. And then as we come into the through swing, we're gonna use the left hip socket as your left pivot. So on the way back, I want to imagine that I'm pivoting around my right hip. So I'm getting this rotation. My hips are turning at least 45 degrees, just like we talk about in the power turn in the top speed golf system. As my shoulders rotate, they're getting to at least 90 degrees. Well, as I'm going back, I want to feel some pressure into my right leg. I want to feel this right hip loading up in the backswing. And then as I come through, I'm going to have a shift to the left. And then my left hip is going to load up and I'm going to rotate around my left hip all the way through to the finish. So go ahead and do this drill for me. If you're sitting in your living room right now, go ahead and grab a club, put it across your shoulders, very high across your shoulders. And then from here, what I want you to do is focus on this right hip and I want you to turn this club. Let's actually put the grip into the club pointing over my left shoulder. I want you to turn this club down until it's at least 90 degrees. If you can go a little bit more, that would be even better. Depends on your flexibility. Again, you gotta make sure those hips rotate to be able to do that. If my hips don't rotate and I try to get a big shoulder turn, that's as far as I can go. As I let my hips rotate, I'm gonna go a little farther. So I'm in my right hip socket. I'm actually even starting to go to my left hip socket at this point. Now I'm gonna get a little transfer to the left and then I'm gonna come all the way on through to a good full finish. Now you'll notice my chest is pointing over what would be the left rough at that point. So go ahead and do this about five or 10 times for me. Right hip, get that, that club pointing all the way back here. Left hip, as you come all the way on through, I want to be nice and high with my chest. I want my belt buckle to be facing the target. I want my nose and my chin to be nice and high, and I want my chest to face onto the left side. If you're not being able to turn through, what you're probably doing there is you're staying down this way. You're never really coming up out of it. As I come on through, I'm going to go ahead and get everything nice and tall and high, and then I can make a good full finish. So do about 10 or 15 just with the club across your shoulders. Now go ahead and take the club, set it on the ground. Let's do the same thing. Focus right hip, shift the left left hip. I'll do about 10 or 15 more swings. Right hip, left hip, and again I'm finishing nice and high with my chest. Everything's good and tall and long so I can get this nice free flowing big arc to my swing. That's going to get you a lot of speed. So that's the first piece. Now on top of this we want to make sure that we have a big arc with our arms and hands. If I'm, now there's two ways I can create speed. Number one, I can have my hands go back a short distance. So imagine my hands are only coming back to here and I'm traveling back down to contact. I'm gonna have to accelerate them really, really fast. If I come back to here, I've gotta really turn on the power quickly. I have to put a lot of force in a short period of time to get this club to accelerate. If I let my arms come back a little bit longer, now I've created some more space and I can put in, if I put in the same amount of force over a longer period of time, I'm gonna get more speed. So we don't actually have to swing any fast, harder. We can actually swing a little bit slower as we're coming back and through. That's gonna help you to get more speed and acceleration. So put that together with what we worked on with the right hip and the left hip. So now let's go to the top and I wanna feel like my arms are nice and long and I'm getting them very high, as high as you can while being comfortable. Now a big key to this, where I see a lot of people go wrong, if I was to turn this way, they have the arms coming more across their body. As the arms come across my body, you'll see that I can't get them very far back. As I let my arms go a little bit more vertical or more up this way, think of Bubba Watson, long hitter, big, huge hand path. Those arms go more up. Now I can get that bigger speed or that bigger arc going back. So let's put those two together now. Right hip, left hip, and I'm gonna let my arms come up and then come on through. Again, nice and tall, nice and high. Do about 10 or 15 more practice swings for me concentrating on those pieces. You even want your arms to come nice and long and high as they're coming on through. If you saw my Ben Hogan video, we know those long arms are a big key to speed. So let's put those together, go out to the driving range, get those long arms, focus on your two pivot points for your golf swing. You're gonna smooth out your swing and you're gonna have a lot more speed while you're doing it. Best of luck to you guys, see y'all soon.
Hi guys, hope y'all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an awesome bonus for you. We all want lots of lag in our golf swing. It's so crucial to have tons of lag to be able to get that high club head speed and to be able to drive it past your friends. I'm gonna play a preview from one of my most important golf lag videos. If you're on a desktop device, you can go ahead and click the link that pops up on your screen. If you're on a phone or a tablet, you go ahead and click the iCard and you're gonna get instant access to that video. Plus, you're gonna get instant access to five videos from our top speed golf system. Good luck to you guys. Go out there and rip the ball. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods. All these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be 